the logical functions are important functions for performing high-level data imputation in situations where there are missing values in columns. These functions allow for replacement or estimation of missing data without losing rows, unlike the method that filter out rows with missing values. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to construct nested if and then and else if statement that will impute missing values in column in Microsoft Fabric Dataflow Gen 2 and Power BI Power Query from SQL Server source data. So let's get started. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Let's dive in. I'm going to come to the SQL Server Management Studio and in the SSMS, I've got this sales database with two tables, employee records and transaction. In the employee records, we have all these columns, the employee ID all through to the pension. We want to focus specifically on the annual salary. Now, we can see we have some null, so these are some missing annual salary value. Our goal is to establish the exact annual salary, and then we have to find a way to logically impute those annual salary values in each of the cells. So we want to actually connect to this source data from the Dataflow Gen 2 in Microsoft Fabric. So I'm going to come back here, and I've got this in A to Z of warehouse workspace. So I'm going to click on this new and we'll create a data flow gen 2. Okay, so I can go on and import data from the SQL server. By the way, it is important you download and install the data gateway in order to connect to the on-premise SQL server. I'm going to put the link of how to download and install the gateway into this video. So you can always watch that video and see how to construct your connection. So in my case, I've got my gateway you know, installed. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this import from SQL Server. And of course, I need my server name. Now, my server name is Abiola David 01 I want to connect to this sales database. So I'm going to type in that server name, Abiola David 01 And I'm going to type in the name of the database, the sales. And this automatically picked up. So I'm going to see my server name and then the name of the database. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. In the intermediate window, I've been able to successfully connect to the sales database, so which is fine. Now I can preview these employee records by just clicking on that, and then I'm going to wait for the data set to come up. There we go. So just place a single check mark here and then go ahead and create. So this is going to automatically launch the data in the data flow gen 2, that is the Power Query online as a single query. And then we have all the columns. So this is basically how we can connect to the on-premise SQL server. So we can see we have the annual salary and then we have the missing values. So let's just check them out. I'm going to scroll down. So we have some couple of names. So I think there's one here. There's another one about five missing values. Let's see how we can logically input all those values using the if and then and the helps if nested statement. Now I'm going to come to this add column tab and under the general we want to create a custom column and I'm going to call this one new annual salary and I'm going to come to the custom column formula. So I can go on and type in the if function. By the way the if function is exactly the same thing in Excel worksheet and of course in the Power BI and so many other engines. So I'm going to type in if. I'm going to just move this window to the left hand side. So I'm going to check this annual salary. First, we want to deal with this null value in this row number four. So I'm going to say if the annual salary is equal to null, and then I'm going to find a way to connect to this specific row number four. So I can logically use the and to check for the corresponding pension in the same row number four, which is four six three two so i'm going to say and so this is the beginning of the if and the and so i'm going to say hey, and pension is equal to in this case i'm going to type in four six three two so if that's true then now let's assume the missing annual salary is a hundred thousand so i'm going to type in one hundred thousand so i'm going to say health if so if and then we'll move to the next row that contain the null value so i want to check hey if the annual salary is equal to null and the pension is equal to now the pension in this case is eight four so eight four three six so if the pension is equal to eight four three six then so let's assume the missing value is seventy thousand so I'm gonna type in seventy thousand 
one, two, three, and then I can say health if, and then I want to check the annual salary for the row number three, the next row, this one here. So I want to check if this is no, and the pension is equal to, in this case, 7008. So there we go. Then, so what's the value I want to replace? So let's see what I'm actually replace with 60,000. So I'm going to type in 6023. And of course, there's one that is still uh, missing at the bottom. Okay, there's one here. So I'm going to say health if. And again, our salary is equal to no. And the pension is equal to, in this case, um, 6984. Um, then, if that is true, Let's we'll actually drop um, 50,000 as the missing value. I'm going to type in 50123. And for now, I think there's one value still missing at the bottom. So let's just leave that for now. So then return 550,000. So I'm going to say else. Else, just return the annual salary. Okay, just return all the values in the annual salary column. So this is fine. Now, unfortunately, in the Power Query Online, we couldn't see whether this is actually correct or not, but in the Power Query in Excel and the Power BI, we can see a check mark that tells us, oh, everything looks good. But I want to be sure everything is fine. So I can specify the data type. I'm going to choose this case, the currency, because this is a monetary you know, stuff. So go ahead and click on OK. And amazing. So we've been able to successfully impute all the missing annual salary in the new annual salary column. Now I'm going to scroll down. Now there's actually one more that is missing. Okay, this value. So I'm going to actually make sure that I try to copy this into my memory. So we we'll actually modify. So we we'll want to check this missing value here and then we'll connect to the 6204. So I can go on and put this in the edit mode. Uh, I'm going to move this to the left hand side. So I can just get rid of this um, last one. I'm going to say health if and I'm going to scroll down here and our salary is equal to null and the pension is equal to in this case um, 6204 and if that is true then let's want to actually drop 200,000 so I'm going to type in 200,000 and I'm going to say health just give me the annual salary column back so this is going to be the nested if and then and the health if statement so go ahead and click on ok and when I click on OK, so this is going to be the final results. OK, amazing. So we can see we have all the values, which is super cool. So for all the nulls, we've been able to impute the missing values with the if and then and the else if statement, which is super amazing. So now I can get rid of this annual salary. I can right click and then remove columns. And there we go. So we have the new annual salary and then the pension. And this is absolutely fine for further analysis. What about if I want to use this code in the Power Query of Power BI desktop? I can easily come to this view tab and in the advanced editor. Now I'm going to copy the whole thing, excluding the source. Go ahead and control C to copy. And I'm going to come back to the desktop version. Now in the desktop, I've got this untitled Power BI instance. So I'm going to click, go ahead and click on um, SQL Server, and then I can type in my server name, Abiola David, 01, and the same sales. Now I'm going to stick with the import mode. Of course, we want to import that small table. So go ahead and click on OK, and then I can connect to the employee records table. So click on this, and of course, we have to take this into the Power Query Transform data. Okay, there we go. We have the employee records, and of course, we have the missing value. Now, I can come to this view and then come to the advanced editor, and I can just select this whole thing from here, or just delete, and control V to paste, okay? So let me just align this properly. Let me just align that properly, and then go ahead and click on Done. And there we go. So we have the data in the Power Query, Power BI desktop. And of course, we can go on and use this kind of data for further analysis. And let's say we want to actually perform data modeling using the stats schema, the dimension table, and the fact table. I can come to this employee right click and then I can duplicate. And let's say I want to actually use this as the department. I'm going to right click and remove all the columns. And then I can right click and remove all the duplicates and I'm going to create a index column. I'm going to come to the add column tab, click on this drop down and I want to add index from one 
and then we can call this one department ID. And once I'm done, go ahead and click enter to commit. And you can right click and rename. Just call this one D department for D for dimension table. So this could be the fact table. And then I can go on and close and apply. So this will close the Power Query and then apply all the changes into the Power BI data model for further analysis. And there we go. So we have the two tables, the D department and then the employee records. So when I come to the model or the relationship view, I'm going to see the one to many relationship. So it's going to be the fact table and then we have the dimension table. So let's just create a simple DAX. I'm going to write, let's want to see the sum of annual salary. Right click and then choose new measure. So I'm going to call it on total annual salary. And then I'm going to use the sum function. And then I want to take the annual salary column, close the bracket, press enter. And let's just apply the currency formatting to make it easy to read. So English United Kingdom. And then I want to drag this across. And let's want to actually slice by the department. So there we go. So we can see we have the sales department as the highest any department, 798,800 next to is the IT department, customer service, and the least any department is the facilities department. So this is basically how we can use the data flow gen tool in Microsoft Fabric and Power Query in Power BI Desktop to automatically perform data imputation. I trust you enjoy this video. If you do, like, share with your friends and comment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.